Kumusta kang lahat? Welcome to Pinoy Crossover, the basketball show for the Filipino community. My name is PJ. Joining me are my hosts, Marky Mark, and we got JR, and we got a special guest, Mark Sweet. What's up, what's up, what's up? Thank you for joining us, man. Yeah, man, thanks for having me back again, man. Good to be here. All right. All right, this is an exciting time because it's the playoffs. Stuff has happened. Series are, you know, we're starting to see uh, teams come up, teams come down. But let's talk about what's happening in the playoffs, Mark. You know, yeah, actually, before we uh, get to that, let's get to the juicy Raptor news that happened recently. Mm-hmm. The firing of Coach Casey. What are, you guys, what are your thoughts about it right now? What's going through your head? Like, you know, if you can go through Masai's mind, what did you think? Why did he do something? Why did he do it? Let Mark go first. What do you think? Man? Well, I don't know. We've seen this team. Some say that they reached their peak. So something has had to change. And I guess in Masai's mind, starting with a coach is a good start. But my thing with the firing Casey, it's sure, we need to change something. But we just need to make sure that the replacement is just as good or even better. Because if we don't get someone that's better than Casey, then what's the point of that then? Yeah, like if you're firing Casey, there has to be what Masai needs to know. Like he probably has a plan for what he wants to do, especially with this whole team, right? It's not just because of what Dwayne Casey has done in the past, but it's also the players. It's not the, the, the head coaching job is just... You know, just a little tip of the iceberg. There's also roster issues about whether you want to trade maybe Cal Lowry, DeMar Rosen, Jonas Valanciunas, or Serge Ibaka, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, it is, it's, it's kind of sad when Casey was let go. But, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to see a, a good coach, a good defensive coach, and he grew with the team as well overall. He grew with the team being a better offensive coach and defensive coach as well with the players that he have had. And now that, you know, they, he let him go, it's, it's sad to see. Hopefully he gets another job pretty soon within the NBA, which he probably will. Mm-hmm. No, I agree with that. He, it was supposed to be the first year of that culture reset, and they mm-hmm. did really well. Like, the mm-hmm. franchise year, he became voted as, you know, the top coaches. Mm-hmm. It just, he just got hit with the wall with LeBron. Mm-hmm. And losing to LeBron twice, and it just didn't really, it, it wasn't the climax that we wanted as Toronto fans. Mm-hmm. But again, Mark said, something had to change. And I don't know, it's a tough situation because they did so well. Like, how, what, are the, what else can they do either in the off season or what's the, like, who can replace? That's the, that's the main key. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Jerry Stackhouse from 905, but mm-hmm. it's going to be a tough situation for Masai. And I feel like our, our hopes and our, I don't know if it's going to be a rebuilding phase again or, because mm-hmm. right now it, it seems that was the peak. Can, they, yeah. can you keep on going further than that? Than because just beating that franchise record was a big accomplishment for the Raptors. What do you think? Well, my, my, I was just going to ask you guys. Actually, did you guys feel like, uh, because I felt, it felt to me that uh, KZ was, you know, was kind of like the scapegoat, that they had to find a reason yeah. what went wrong, right? So yeah. I, I felt like he was an scapegoat. So my, like, my, I was going to ask you guys, did you guys feel like the firing of KZ was the better choice? Like, do you guys think that his firing was the better choice rather than looking into the players? Because really, like, they had the best record in franchise history. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they played really well against the uh, the the Wizards. And did you guys think like, fighting LeBron was just such a big hurdle mentally for their superstars that, you know, do we have to look at Casey right away as an escape goal or do we look at the players, like the star players that couldn't play well, like the Rosen and Lowry? Mm-hmm. Well, you could look at both ways. The players, you could say Dubmar, Rosen, and Kyle Lowry technically almost got, got, they got their coach fired. Mm-hmm. But then again, Dwayne Casey has, he's grew so much with his team that um, there needs to be what Masai said and other people are saying that there needs to be a new voice on the team so they could help DeMar Rosen and Kyle Lowry if they were to stay there to change the whole team, whether that be Jerry Stackhouse, even Becky Hammond. Uh, unfortunately, Mike Budenholzer is now on the Milwaukee Bucks. So it, we want to see a new voice and probably and try to stick with what the culture change they still have now. But, you know, we'll see what happens with that, man. Well, yeah, like you can't, they need, they need to move some players to right? No matter what coach, we, we got like Greg Popovich, we're still not, with the same roster, we're still not going to mm-hmm. do much. Mm-hmm. Like my thing, like Serge Ibaka, like he's a cool guy. Like, he, he loves the city of Toronto, but like I think he's got to go, mm-hmm. right? We paid him how much money and like he's not, like we got him just because we have someone to match up with Kevin Love, but mm-hmm. he's not producing. Like mm-hmm. his best game of the playoffs was that first game against Washington yeah. and he's like gone after that. He disappeared. <laughs> yeah, so it's like 
we got to make roster changes too. Like, not, not blow it up, obviously, but we got to make some tweaks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So who do you guys, like, in your mind, if you were Masai, who would be your best candidate to replace the coaching of Dean Quasey? Yeah. I'm putting you guys in Masai's shoe right now. You guys are... You got, I, I believe in Masai, so you got... <laughs> I don't believe in myself. So. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, I, I'm just going to go back to that last question. I don't think they should have fired Casey. I like Casey. Yeah. And especially mm -hmm. since that was the one year where he, he did redeem himself. He came, he came firing and he, mm -hmm. he became coach of the year. And then he brought them to franchise records. So I feel like Masai should have gave him a chance. But just like you said, it was a scapegoat type, mm -hmm. of, type of move because the public was just really, really... Angry. Yeah, Toronto and, was just quiet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but I did. But, but I did believe it was the like the players didn't perform, and it's mm -hmm. just the the combination of just LeBron's mental effect and mm -hmm. losing twice at home, and it was such close games. Mm -hmm. Like if if one game went to us, it would have been a way different series, or mm -hmm. even the two games. If we took the two games, it would have yeah. been a way different series. And mm -hmm. I even believe that Raptors could have came on top. Yeah, but. It just didn't happen like that, and I think Dwayne Casey would, it was a good fit. Like he, the, the players trust him. He mm -hmm. got everyone together. It's mm -hmm. just, just unfortunate, and I don't really have a candidate that would replace Casey because I think it was a great fit. But I don't know. What do you, who, who, you're you're more of a coaching guy. The, yeah. You know all the coaches available. So who would you well, think? We we have to give like you know some love to Jerry Stackhouse and what he's been yeah. doing at uh, Raptors 905. So I don't mind if they do go internally in terms of their organization. Um, I would. I was. It was a good idea. Actually, if Mike uh, taking that job at Milwaukee was, I think it was good because I don't want a coach again coming in. You know, that was that had so many chances to get at LeBron and was swept a couple times. Yeah. And he had. I, I think he had a better roster than what we had because he had some. You know, talented like Al Horford, Paul Millsap, Jeff Teague. Uh, they had. He had a really good roster. Kyle Korver was in there too. They had four all stars, like, like you know, they had a year when they won 60 games and they had four all stars. That was their chance to get a LeBron, and like they played like Spurs basketball and they still couldn't beat LeBron. So I don't know what else can he bring to the table. Uh, I'm looking at you know like the uh, coach like Becky Hammond. I think that would be um, a good bet on, just not just because of the fact that she's under uh, Coach uh, Pop's disciple, like under the coaching of and the philosophy of Coach uh, Pop. But I think she's gonna bring a whole new different view, a whole new different culture, like we we're mentioning. And I, th I think it would be a good choice if they consider her. I, I totally agree. If, if yeah. Becky, Ham Becky Hammond would be the new voice that the Raptors or Messiah wants for this team. Mm -hmm. And then alternatively, I know how you wanna see like Nick Nurse or, uh, mm -hmm. to be promoted. There's also, yeah, Jerry Stackhouse internally. So those are probably my top two picks. I'd say Jerry Stackhouse mm -hmm. and, and that new voice, Becky Hammond. Hopefully, she, and she gets her, her own first. Uh, coaching job in the NBA as well. Mm -hmm. That would be quite a milestone too, in yeah. terms of women getting, mm -hmm. getting head coach position. Mm -hmm.